What's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. I really hope that. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video, which is a Chelsea news video where I'll be talking about a few things from Hakim Ziyech to Kennedy scoring goals in the Europa League to Ruben Loftus-Cheek being fully fit, been or match fit, to Kepa remaining dropped and a few other things. A lot of this is coming from Frank Lampard's press conference, which he did prior to the Tottenham game, and some other stuff from some other stuff. Anyway, before we get into the content today, guys, I want to remind you, please, to subscribe to Football Therapy. If you've not already done so, please sub, hit that bell notification icon, which is very important. Why not like the video to help me out, and follow me on Instagram, superb. All right, let's get into it. Right, let's start with Ruben Loftus-Cheek. As you know, here on Football Therapy, we, or... Oh, I am a huge, huge fan of Ruben Loftus-Cheek. I think he's going to be a huge difference maker in this Chelsea side. And he is 100% injury-free and fit. He's constantly doing all first team training with the Chelsea team. He is officially in the squad now. No more youth development nonsense. No more development squad nonsense. Man is back where he belongs, he's strong, he's fast, but he's not quite match fit. Still, he's in the squad, that's superb. Frank Lampard has confirmed that himself. I doubt he'll start this weekend, but he might be on the bench and he could be in and around and moving forwards. Who knows, he might be on the bench for Bayern. He might start against Bayern Munich. Superb, man. Obviously, N'Golo Kante is injured. He's come off injured again. He's going to be out for a few weeks. Uh, maybe as little as three weeks, says Frank Lampard. It's really, really frustrating. And, and I really feel sorry for the Frenchman because obviously he's been such an ever-present in the Premier League for the last few years. Now he's just in and out, in and out, constantly with injury. It's very sad to see. But at least we know who's going to fill that third central midfield spot moving forwards in the immediate future. That's right, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, the tank himself, a formidable midfield of Jorginho at the base of the pivot. Kovacic on one side, dribbling the ball and playing passes out from deep. And Ruben Loftus-Cheek picking up the passes, driving forwards like a bulldozer, getting into the final third, occupying spaces in the hole, scoring goals assisting goals, bullying people. I don't want to <laughs> wax lyrical too much about this player because he is, of course, coming back from injury and he needs to be in a big stadium with, you know, 40,000 fans plus, all like screaming, cheering, jeering, to, and really see how he gets on with it. Do you know what I mean? But in terms of his ability, absolutely huge for Chelsea. He's in the squad. Hopefully, it's a shining light that Chelsea fans can follow <laughs> to the end of the season and hopefully into a top four space come the end of May. So, you know, that's good. Next up, I want to talk about something Frank Lampard commented on in his presser as well, and that's the Kepa Rita Balaga situation, because obviously he's been dropped for a couple of big games now, before the winter break and after the winter break, kind of confirming that the, the world's most expensive goalkeeper is dropped. It's done. It's happened. He's dropped. And not only is he dropped playing, like, you know, it's not like we got Romero as a backup. Now, I don't want to disrespect Willy Caballero, but he's the oldest player in the Premier League. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's 38. He's over 38. He's a good shot stopper at times, but he's mad. He's mental. He runs out his goal all the time. He's not amazing at passing, but that's fine. At this point, Chelsea fans just want the goalkeeper to just clear it. Get it away. Do you know what I mean? Or if you put it in Rose Ed, fine. If you make a save and put it in Rose Ed, great. You're doing your job, mate. That's all we need at the moment. We don't need this philosophical goalkeeper right now. We just need someone to make saves. But he does run out like a maniac. So it's a huge statement. He is dropped. He was questioned. What does Kepa have to do to get back in the team? He's like, well, it, you know, it, it's, it depends. And also, he kind of sort of hinted at a player profile thing. As in, like, if he suits what I want to do in that game, I'll play him. But I think that might have been a little bit of a cheap shot as they just move on to the next question. Because really, you should have to play one way with a goalkeeper and you don't switch your goalkeepers, really. I mean, the only argument you'd make is Kepper is a better footballing goalkeeper, generally. But if you had a penalty shootout, you'd bring Caballero in. Much like in the League Cup final last season when Kepper refused to come off, Caballero would have been the better candidate to be a shot stopper and goal. Plus, obviously, he knew the Man City players, so it's loads of reasons why he should have actually been substituted. Anyway. I digress. Frank Lampard was then questioned about is there any sort of animosity and tension between him and the Chelsea board because of this Kepa decision and he said absolutely not. 
the Chelsea coach poured cold, blah, blah, poured cold water all over this and said, no, no, they pay me to make these decisions. Good answer. I'm the manager. This is what's happening. He's giving away goals. We're dropping points. It's a big decision to make. I'm going to do my job as Chelsea manager and drop this guy. And fair play to him, you know. I kind of I do rate Kepa generally in terms of his ability, but he, it kind of did. That position became untenable. So I get it, man. Do you know what I mean? Fine. Drop him anyway, but apparently all sweet between Frank Lampard and the Chelsea board. So, you know, that's good. Kennedy, right? Remember him? He's on loan at Hitafe. It's not Getafe, I'm pretty sure it's Hitafe, or it could be Getafe, but I'm gonna call it Hitafe. They matched up with Ajax in the Europa League yesterday. Getafe, who are doing really, really Hetafe. What make a decision, Jan? Hetafe. Hetafe are doing really good in La Liga at the moment. They're really, to, I think they were third last time I checked. They might be fourth now, but they're doing really well, basically. Kennedy's on loan there. They were 1 0 up against Ajax. Hakim Ziyech Ajax. Hakim Ziyech's Ajax. New Chelsea boy, winger guy that we've bought and apparently the Moroccan couldn't do the business and Ajax lost 2-0 they're 1-0 down Kennedy comes off the bench strikes the blow against Ajax and scores the second doing bits so you know Chelsea's unwanted loney winger doing the business Chelsea's new big money well it's not even that big money signing or such a bargain Chelsea's new superstar signing winger didn't do the bits. So that's interesting. We'll see what happens in the second leg at the Johan Cruyff Arena. But to be honest, Ajax have been wobbly at home, especially in these high profile games. They might get knocked out by Hatafe, which will be bad for them. Still, everyone's going to be keeping a keen eye on Hakim Ziyech all the way to the summer till he arrives at Chelsea. Hopefully, he. <laughs> It's weird, isn't it? When a player knows they're leaving, what happens to their form? Do you know what I mean? Like Christian Pulisic's form at Dortmund picked up quite a bit after he made the uh, agreement to Chelsea to, to go at the end of the season because Chelsea loaned him back for six months. So I don't know what's happening with Ziyech. We'll have to see. I'll keep a keen eye on him and we'll see what happens. But he's a fantastic player, obviously. Right, Olivier Giroud. Why wasn't he playing at Man United? Why is Frank Lampard treating him so badly? No, 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 no. Well, the truth has come out. See, the thing is, right, he wasn't first choice for Chelsea because Tammy Abraham was first choice. Everyone accepted that. Tammy scored loads of goals. Giroud got a couple of starts. He, I think I said the stats in a video recently. Um, Michy played less than Giroud in the Premier League. He's got two goal involvements. Giroud's got none. Obviously, michi has been really frustrating. Giroud did start that game where he was completely anonymous and barely touched the ball. So there's that. But the truth is, in January, because of all of this, he was out the door. Lampard says, look mate, you need to play for the Euros, we'll get you to Lazio, we'll get you to Inter, agreements were made. But at the very end of the final hurdle, it never happened. Up until the end of the window, Giroud wasn't playing because he was supposed to be getting a deal to a new club, so you didn't want to get injured. This is what happens, you don't play the football matches until you make the transfer. You stay healthy and run about and keep your body fat though, but you, you, know, you, you don't play in case someone comes in and sticks their studs in your leg and you can't make the transfer. So, come the end of the transfer window when the move wasn't made, the guy wasn't match fit and apparently Frank Lampard said this, well not apparently, Frank Lampard said in his press conference today that apparently Giroud came up to him and said, look man, I'm not ready to play, I'm not match fit, I can't start this game. So Michy Batshuayi started this whole treatment of Giroud news story that's circulating around social media and news outlets is really a load of nonsense. No wonder Giroud's had such a professional attitude because probably he's not being treated badly at all. He came on against Manchester United, scored a wonderful offside header. I think Lampard's happy to use him, provided Giroud thinks he's ready to play and start and be able to play, you know, 90 minutes. But he said in the press conference, Giroud said he wasn't fit, he wasn't ready, now he thinks he's okay, he's in contention to start. I think he's probably gone in front of Michy Batshuayi in terms of the rotational striker. Who knows? Maybe Giroud starts against Tottenham, we'll have to see. You might be watching this after the Tottenham game. I just wanted to explain this news story to you guys in the meantime. Anyway, Frank Lampard also commented on stuff like, uh, you know, will it be a failure now if you finish outside the top four? And he's like, well, it's for other people to judge. Loads of people put us outside the top four pre-season, you know, quite rightly because of the transfer ban and the loss of Eden Hazard, etc. And the utilisation of youth who have all stepped up but understandably dropped form because they're developing as players and people, direct quote from Frank Lampard, but he says, look, we, we've been in this position, we have to fight, but people around us, and he dropped this in again quite slightly, he's like, all the teams around us fighting for the same thing, you know, they've all strengthened. Again, a little dig at the January 
uh, situation where he wanted to strengthen but couldn't. Every, all the teams around Chelsea have strengthened, so we'll have to see what happens. But he's not laying on the excuses thick. He's going, this is the situation, we're going to fight super hard, and hopefully we'll get top four. Anyway, I want to get your guys' thoughts and opinions on the stuff I've discussed in today's video. Let me know what your thoughts are about Kennedy. Do you think there's still a chance that Kennedy could do anything in the Chelsea team? I don't think so, unless he completely explodes at Hatafe, we'll have to see. Ruben's back, is that huge? Is he just going to start every single game? Do you think he'll find form again? What do you think about Olivier Giroud? Do you think he should be starting over Tammy Abraham, maybe? Like I said, I think he's grown better in his absence, if you look at his numbers and actually how he performed on the pitch when he started. It's quite a dismal performance, really. It's not his fault, Chelsea don't really play to his strengths. So maybe Chelsea need to play to his strengths a bit more. Anyway, get down in the comment section, express your thoughts and opinions and everything. And if you've enjoyed the content today, guys, please do like this video. It means a lot. Subscribe if you're new. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby